Are there any questions that you would like to ask of any of us? When might the buses arrive here? Uh, Mary, the, I, I believe it's about 20 month schedule. The, uh, the initial cost is much more than a, than a diesel or a propane bus, right? There is a premium cost for the uh, hybrid buses, and it's about 40% over the cost of a normal diesel bus, but they also get about 20% better gas economy. Have you figured out, I mean, projected it out, how long it will take to recoup the, the difference in the cost? Um, one of the things that we're really interested in this project is that it will give us a basis for doing that as we move forward and begin to purchase the fleet of the future. So um, the answer is no. Uh, other properties have done that, and I'm sure there's a, there's good research on that, but from the TriMet local perspective, one of the great advantages of these buses on this line, it will give us a, a baseline for which we can make that, uh, that evaluation in the future. How will this procurement affect some of the oldest buses in the fleet that are uh, not, high, not local or don't have air conditioning? TriMet has a very uh, elaborate fleet management system. And so actually what we do is we look at each individual bus and look at their, if you will, their history. And so what we do is as we get new buses, we, we, try, we retire the most troublesome buses. Sometimes that's actually not the oldest bus, but the most troublesome bus. But obviously we're moving as a policy to move to all low floor vehicles, all air conditioned vehicles, all comfortable vehicles with great um, amenities for, as, as Deputy Administrator McMillan noted, for um, automatic stop announcements, sign boards, many other amenities, cameras on board that actually I think will help the whole system upgrade over time. Does this need up the timeline for that? Yes, exactly. Will there be any increased monies for securities along the lines? Not out of this grant, but I must note that over the last two years, TriMet has actually doubled the size of its security force. We doubled the number of officers. We've actually increased their assignments so that they are now on the system 70% of the time actually riding the bus or the light rail. So overall, I think we've seen a change and we've seen some improvement and I hope that we continue to see that over time. And another question, is there going to focus on moving forward, breaking into Vancouver, getting a third bridge over to Columbia to help those uh, people from Washington coming in here that are crowding our highways? We understand and actually I'm sure uh, the Congressman may want to speak to that as well. Um, the Columbia River Crossing project is, is still in um, the evaluation stage. We expect some major reports from the independent review panel this summer. We think that will actually help the decision process so it will lead to the kinds of improvements that will reduce the kind of cut through that I know this neighborhood currently experiences. Yes, there, there will be uh, progress in terms of the Columbia River crossing, but nothing will move forward without improved transit, and that means light rail in my mind, something I've been working on personally for uh, about 25 years, um, and I think that this is the decade that we're going to see that happen.